what's ripening and welcome to my channel if you're new here if you like the video make sure you like it give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe for more videos um, my name is Matthew Reese and I've been practicing permaculture in Southwest Florida for the past 10 years I'm also a permaculture consultant and designer and I'm walking through right now um, my farm that I've been developing for the last three and a half years here in Southwest Florida um, and today there goes a hawk and today I want to share with you some of my favorite biomass plants for a wet site so in this part of the state and lots of lots of coastal parts of Florida we have pretty high water table especially in the summertime and we have to deal with things like flooding or just complete soil saturation this is no different I have the same issues here we do get standing water here at times and um, a lot of my effort on this property is ensuring the health of my plants that I am growing for food production and also trying to figure out what else I can add in that will help to boost their uh, their growth and fertility so there's a few things I've tried I've tried a lot of things there's a few things that I'm really excited about now one of my favorites you'll see behind me is bananas bananas is one of the few fruit trees that I've planted here um, right in, right at grade I don't worry about um, putting them on putting them up on a mound and as you can see they're very productive for me um, it's more of a maintenance trying to keep them uh, thinned out so they don't shade out everything else than anything else. But if you'll notice, I mean, look at the biomass. Look at that. That's biomass. Um, so that's one of the ones I like the, the most. Another one that I like a lot, which I didn't ever consider it to be a biomass plant at first, but I do now. And that would be what you see behind me. This is galangal or galangal or in Thai cuisine it'd be ka like tom ka soup. This is a root crop uh, similar to ginger it's kind of a peppery taste and uh, it's used in a lot of different Southeast Asian cuisines but for me it grows amazingly well in a wet spot with a decent amount of mulch and so I actually chop and drop it. I, I cut it down to the ground. I've already done that I've already done that through this entire row, um, I think twice this summer, and you can see it's grown right back. Um, and you'll see in between it, this is canna lily here. These ones have just finished flowering. Some of them are still flowering here. Um, a lot of these have a little honeysuckle uh, nectar at the back end of the flower you can enjoy, but mostly I, I grow these canna lilies for the same thing for biomass production. And again, I cut them and just feed them onto the bottom of the tree along with the bananas um, those have been the the best summer biomass production plants that I've used another one that I have been cutting back a lot lately is is my sweet potatoes um, I planted these uh, probably two years ago and obviously didn't get them all out of the ground so they've grown back and I don't expect to get a great root crop out of those this year but they do serve me very well as a ground cover. Um, this entire corridor was completely covered. I've already pulled it all up, piled it up, and, and mulched my, uh, my fruit trees with it, and it's grown back. Um, so the, the sweet potato, you know, you can grow it as a root crop, you can grow it for greens, and you, if you're like me and you just have a big area, you can just grow it as a ground cover. Nothing wrong with that. Um, another one I'm trying out, here's an example of ones that I've already pulled up, but these are different types of aeroids. Um, I'm not sure if that's the Edo or what kind it is, but I'm trying a lot of different ones. I haven't had a huge production of biomass out of these, but they seem to thrive just fine. They do occupy space. Um, you'll notice here, Tithonia is not another one of my heavy hitters that I use a lot. This is one that I pruned maybe like six weeks ago, and that's probably like two weeks ago. You can see the difference in the, in the growth pattern. Um, the bananas in this area I have thinned out so they're not nearly as dense 
you know, I pulled out a lot of the uh, the biomass that was in those clumps and put it down um, on either side of my fruit trees. And now I'm growing pineapples um, in the shade of my mangoes. So um, another good biomass tree is the inga or the ice cream bean. It does not mind wet soil at all. Um, it actually likes it. It can take wet and dry as long as it doesn't get cold. They do quite well. And these definitely, definitely fix nitrogen. You can tell just by the color of the leaves. They're just incredibly dark green. Um, they just, they're just vibrant. Um, pull them out of the ground. It's like popcorn clusters all over the, all over the root system. So they're definitely doing their job. Uh, so those are the favorites for me right now. And uh, let me know what you think.